Imagine an eye unruled by man-made laws of perspective, an eye unprejudiced by compositional logic, an eye which does not respond to the name of everything, but which must know each object encountered in life through an adventure of perception. These were jottings uh, that came out of me uh, across uh, some several years of the making of Dog Star Man principally that were, uh, and, and right through to the making of M Mothlight, that were, uh, uh, you know, buttressing my own uh, confusions and fears about what I was doing and discovering. How many colors are there in a field of grass to the crawling baby unaware of, quote, green, end quote. How many rainbows can light create for the untutored eye? How aware of variations in heat waves can that eye be? Imagine a world alive with incomprehensible objects and shimmering with an endless variety of movement and innumerable gradations of color. Imagine a world before the, quote, beginning was the word, end quote. I mean, what was behind that was um, all, all those paintings, say, take, for example, German Expressionist painting, where, where, the, the, where there would be fields of grass that were a multiple, pul multiplicity of colors, or the green of the grass would be seen most clearly reflected up into the faces of the, uh, um, you know, the represented, represented people within the painting, or the fauves, where the grass might be all the colors that it actually could be if you're not imposing green upon a spade of grass. It can, yes, even be orange, bright orange, reds. It can curl with colors that are a backfeed of the mind's eye. Um, it can veritably flame before your eyes. And, you know, and I, I grew up with painters that recognized that, painters that even were drawing pictures which are framed, uh, compositionally framed, nameable things, were alive, were struggling against the strictures of language and the assumptions of all previous painters to open up uh, human perception. Well, I had, uh, you know, brief a brief moment that was electrifying and forever memorable with Jackson Pollock, my my hero from 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 high school. Um, literally at the period when he was desperately trying to evolve from uh, uh, back to totemistic painting. Um, and and was um, well sunk in his alcoholism. Uh, Parker Tyler and Charles Bolton House uh, took me out to his barn one day when some other critics also from New York had been invited to look at what later Life Magazine was to make famous as the Cyclopean painting in as much as Life Magazine could not see both eyes. Um, but at any rate, uh, this misnomer <laughs> painting was uh, essentially finished and hung stuck on the walls of uh, Pollock's barn and Pollock was dead drunk with a quart of, uh, of whiskey beside him, two-thirds down. Um, and um, these New York painters were, were, and I mean I was too shy to say anything, but they, just watching, but they were like commenting and they used the word chance operations which was no bother to me because I was hearing it regularly from John Cage and so on, you know, and the power and the wonder of it and the E-King and so forth. But this really angered very deeply um, Pollock, and, uh, and, and he, said, he said, don't give me any of your fucking chance operations. He said, you see that doorknob? And there was a doorknob that was about 50 feet from where he was sitting that was in fact the door that everyone was going to have to exit by. And drunk as he was, he, he just with one swirl of his brush picked up a glob of paint, hurled it, and hit that doorknob smack on with very little paint over the edges. And so then he said, and that's the way out.
frankly, I don't see any chance operations in John Cage's work either. And, and uh, 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 I see that he, he tried many different things, as I did. And, 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 and in that sense, uh, yes, I, I cast through the dice many different ways. Hazard of the dice, right? And, and rejected almost all of them. I mean, uh, uh, he dipped toothbrush in, in ink and splattered it across page and threw dice and put, put uh, notations as to whether those were whole notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, whatever, uh, played it and threw most of it away. And when he found something that he liked, he kept it. Or liked would be too small a word. When he found something that seemed, uh, seemed from his soul, you know, that he could respond to it and be in charge of it, therefore, and, and sign it, uh, give it out to the world. Well, it, it seems the same to me, you know, that's the way I work. I thought that it was because I could not afford to pay for titles to be um, attached to the film Desist Film, that I uh, would scratch them and have the actors scratch their initials backwards uh, to give them a credit uh, in the making of that film. The truth is, I could have raised that money that didn't cost that much. I stumbled, therefore, into or was given the gift of the scratching of titles uh, directly onto the film surface, which, which had this effect, that from the beginning, the viewer was given uh, uh, the a uh, rhythm of the very projector that was going to show them the rest of the film. They were given uh, the, uh, uh, sen the sense of the film surface itself. They were given handwriting. Uh, even when the titles were printed, they were given some sense of that that we call a signature or the, the very uh, soul of, uh, of the maker uh, in writ. Uh, that, that that cannot be counterfeited um, uh, is there on scratched, etched on the film surface. Um, and that became something that I continued to do. And, and that was intrinsic to me, that, that the work be hands-on, that it show uh, the, hu the human being that it had passed through in every conceivable way, that it remove itself as much as possible from all that trickery, that it was perhaps a window or a... Uh, a, a God-given uh, envisionment or something of that sort. I suppose as I go on representing this in ways that are available to me, which have across the years uh, encompassed uh, a baking film in the oven, ironing it, uh, photographing um, um, iron filings under magnetic and under vibrations, using vibrations and powders, photographing brine shrimp herded into a small space to get the meat, uh, meat uh, quivering sense of it, um, uh, and largely painting. And I have been increasingly painting and painting, and now for the last four or five years, with the exception of, of uh, very recent times, I had been only painting only making 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 paintings like uh, like that you know that's a whole film that's nine seconds long that's painted you read it strip at a time down that way if you could do it and blink your eyes 24 frames a second you'd, you'd have your nine second movie <laughs>